So let's go ahead and get started here. We have a number of people on the call, I mean, on the Zoom with us already. Uh, and I know we're midday, people have busy days, a lot of things going on. So uh, this is gonna be our first uh, downtown subcommittee Zoom meeting. And uh, again, it's, it's taking some getting used to, it's a lot different than before, but I, I also don't wanna, in keeping with our tradition, I don't wanna keep our meeting too rigid either, but uh, let's go ahead and call our meeting to order. And uh, our recording secretary, do we need to take, have you take a roll call, is that what we need to do? Uh, let the record show that all members are in attendance. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So we'll go ahead and, and call that to order. And I'm going to read off a statement here that I think we're required to do because of our form of meetings now. Uh, but due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders N-25-20 and N-29-20, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the health officers of the County of Sonoma to shelter in, in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the downtown subcommittee uh, will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Subcommittee members and staff are participating from remote locations and or practicing appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Uh, members of the public wishing to speak during item three public comment or during our public uh, hearing items will be able to do so, excuse me, will be able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature uh, on, on their screen or by pressing, uh, I, I think it's, it's a star nine on their phone and then uh, they will be given the ability to address a subcommittee. So that, those are our, our, our ground rules, I suppose. Uh, do we have any announcements today? Other than to welcome everybody back uh, to, our, to our meetings, we've had a little bit of an absence uh, but I, we do have some very important report outs for you today too. So let's go ahead and zoom into, I mean, sorry, zoom into our, yeah, I guess so, our public comments. So if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. Uh, if you are dialing uh, in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. And please make sure to mute yourself when, uh, to unmute yourself, I'm sorry, unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Uh, your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown. So we'll turn it over to our recording secretary to go ahead and start that process. Hi, um, uh, at this time, I don't see that any hands are raised. Thank you. For those of you uh, joining us uh, today, please, if you have uh, any any comments on items not on today's agenda, this now is the opportunity to do so. Okay, we don't have any email or recorded uh, calls either, right? No, we do not. Okay, then let's go ahead and move on to our, our agenda. Um, and uh, we'll begin with our, our permitted events and public art update by uh, Tara Thompson. Tara, take it away. And Tara, I will unmute you in just one moment. I apologize, this is just taking one more second. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Tara Thompson, the city's arts and culture manager, and I wanted to provide a brief update on permitted events as well as public art projects in the downtown. Um, as you know, uh, events have had to drastically change um, how they can occur. If, if they do at all, they are in virtual settings at this point. Uh, the city has suspended all special event permits through Labor Day as of today. However, um, I am working with a team of city staff that make up the special event application review team with representatives from various city departments, including fire, police, parks, transportation, public works, etc. Um, on a recommendation for the rest of 2020 as there's still so much uncertainty about how we may be able to permit those large events. Um, so stay tuned for an update on that in the coming days. Um, and you know, most of the events that, that were slated to occur this spring and summer have completely canceled for 2020 and are looking forward to 2021. However, there were some events that we're trying to reschedule for a date later in the fall this year. And at this point, those are um, to be determined. 
Um, you may have heard that Ironman has released a tentative um, go forward date for rescheduling both of their May and July events here in Santa Rosa um, for October 17th. And that is um, tentative based on a variety of conditions, but should they be able to go forward with that, the city has tentatively approved that date. Um, I think that's it for special events. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'll jump into the public art update first and then maybe uh, any questions I can answer at the end. So for public okay. art, um, there's a new opportunity that you'll hear a little bit more about um, when Cadence provides her DAO update. Um, but I wanted to share that the public art program has allocated funding towards the open and out call for artists. Uh, the open and out program is already kind of in effect with a variety of um, phases um, meant to allow restaurants and businesses downtown to expand their usable space out into the sidewalk, parking spaces, and potentially the street as well. And a part of that program includes a call for artists. Um, the uh, idea is to create a pool of artists that we can then work with on specific projects that range from uh, streetscape kind of beautification and improvement projects to temporary art installations. Uh, we're hoping to see some of those start soon in the next few weeks and continue throughout the summer and into the fall. Um, I wanted to also provide a brief update on the uh, Courthouse Square public art project, Imagine Art in Courthouse Square. Um, this project has been delayed by COVID by about six months. So I think when I reported back in February, perhaps, maybe it was the beginning of March, um, we were on track to have five finalist proposals ready to um, be kind of weighed in on by the community and by our selection panel um, in, in springtime. Now that's been pushed back to late summer and early fall. Uh, but we are still on track for that project, just about six months behind our original timeline. That will put the installation of the artwork around January of 2022, rather than July of, uh, sorry, August of 2021 as originally planned. A few other uh, brief updates. We are still working on re restoring the Ruth Asawa panels to the fountain in the square with a kind of unknown timeline at this point for that, but we are still working to get that completed, working with the DAO. And um, we are also working on conservation and maintenance projects on public art pieces throughout the downtown. Most recently, some work was done on the wood fence panels at the downtown library, which are actually a piece of public art, unbeknownst to many. And um, next up will be the water, woman with the water jug fountain on 4th Street at Jeju Way. So those are the updates I have for you today, and thank you. Thank you, Tara. John, Victoria, any questions? Victoria, I, I just one. Um, thank you, Council Member Oliveras. I, I, I'm curious about the work on the uh, water bearer um, from Jeju. Uh, wh what kind of work is being done? Is it is it mainly plumbing, or has there been some damage? There is currently no damage, which is great. Um, but the fountain itself, we need to be working with our public works team and parks uh, team on some of the rust issues that are at the base of the fountain, which um, which are, are a little bit outside of the scope of our art conservators. What they would be focusing on once we can address some of the rusting is the um, mineral deposits on the stone structure itself, on the stone um, sculpture itself. They will work to uh, kind of um, neutralize the water chemistry to make sure that um, the water deposits, mineral deposits are kind of less noticeable to the actual sculpture. That's really what they will focus on, but there, but there are some rust issues to be dealt with with the grate, the grate at the bottom of the fountain. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. No questions. Thank you, Tara. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, do we have any members of uh, the public that have uh, comments or questions on this item? Uh, Chair Oliver, I don't see that we have any um, at this time. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll go on to our next item. Uh, uh, let's see, we have, I'm sorry? Um, I just wanted to let you know, unfortunately, it does not appear that um, our next presenter, Amy Lyle, is has been able to join. So um, okay. it will be going to the next item. Let's, okay, good. Then let's go ahead and move to our downtown uh, looks, action organization. Really quick, this is one of the hosts. It looks like Supervising Planner Lyle has joined. Oh, she just started. Okay. She just raised her hand. 
<laughs> okay, good, good, good. Let's go back. Uh, if, if, if you're ready, Lynn, we can go ahead and start with our downtown stationary specific plan. Hi, can you Amy? hear me? Amy, yes, I'm sorry. Great. Thank you so much. This is Amy Lyle, Supervising Planner with uh, Planning and Economic Development. Just wanted to give you a brief update today on the downtown stationary specific plan. Um, as you know, it's an update of the existing specific plan, and we actually are considering this a full overhaul, um, removing many barriers to residential development and updating um, other aspects to really create a greater sense of place and a more multimodal framework for the downtown. And so the last time that um, we spoke with the council was actually in December of 2019. So since that point, we've been drafting the specific plan and the environmental impact report. And we are going to be releasing both documents next week on the 15th. And so those will both uh, be available on the website. And then that will also kick off a round of um, public outreach, all of which will be virtual. But we do plan to hold virtual meetings with um, the preservation districts around the downtown. So we have four meetings planned for specific neighborhoods. Um, we are planning to meet with the Downtown Action Organization, Metro Chamber, Disability Rights Center, um, college students at the JC in Sonoma State. And we will be having one meeting held entirely in Spanish. And um, in addition, we will be going to our, um, our standing committees as well. So I hope to come back to this committee once the plan is released and um, you all have had a chance to review to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we also are going to be picking at the bike and pedestrian committee. We'll be having a joint design review board, cultural heritage board meeting, waterways advisory committee meeting. Um, so all of that outreach will be going on through the rest of July and um, into August. And then the remainder of the schedule includes a planning commission meeting um, August 6th, and then again in late September for their final recommendation. And then city council in um, early October, um, we're hoping to maybe push it into late September. Um, we're thinking about power shutoffs and hoping to get through the process um, before that potential occurs. Um, so that is our schedule at this point. And um, on the 15th next week, when the documents are released, we do plan to hold a public open house and that will be virtual and it will be in the evening. And the information will be publicized um, through our social media outlets and um, any place we can uh, later today. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. John, Victoria? Victoria? Uh, thank you for the update. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Any members uh, of, of the public wish to make comment or have questions on this item? I don't see that anyone has raised their hand at this time. Um, I, I, Still good? Hi, were you able to hear me? <laughs> yeah, it looks like yes, we have I, I was able to hear you. Just oh. checking to see if anybody, I think we have a couple of hands now. Yeah, it looks like we have three hands raised. Okay. Um, Dig, I'm going to allow you to, to mm -hmm. unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Uh, yes, quick question. Have there been any significant changes? Yeah, I don't think we already heard your question. Can you hear me now? Yes. Were there any significant changes to the plan since it was last presented back in December? Would you like me to answer these individually? Yes, let's go ahead and do that, Amy. This is, I want to try to stick to our old habits, which are pretty informal, if we could. <laughs> Sounds great. Um, so no significant changes. So we're still on track with that preferred scenario that was presented and accepted by the city council. Um, there has been quite a bit of research done 
to um, offer incentives for uh, housing and other amenities in the downtown. And also a lot of work on um, historic preservation and how we deal with the transition between um, downtown and height and then the single story historic areas. Um, but the biggest change that will occur with the plan is really a removal of height restrictions and moving to a floor area ratio, which gives, gives greater flexibility, but there's still be some uh, parameters around those transition zones. Thank you, Amy. The next person is David Del Santos. If you'd like to unmute yourself. Yes, hello. I just wanted to confirm that the uh, when the uh, specific plan was going to be officially adopted, is that in October after City Council reviews it, or will it be beyond that? Yes. So we do are we are hoping that it will occur in one meeting. Um, so we do have two meetings planned for the Planning Commission. So the first one in August will be a public hearing on the draft environmental impact report and um, a review of the plan itself. And then their comments will be incorporated along with the public into the EIR. Uh, we will be having um, a pause to be able to respond to all the comments we receive on the environmental document. And then a final EIR will be produced and so that the final plan and the final EIR encompassing all the comments we receive over the next couple of months will then be presented to the Planning Commission once again for their formal recommendation to the City Council. So um, at that point, the City Council will be asked to review and adopt. And um, it, we hope it could occur in one meeting, but could be potentially two meetings. Thank you. Thank you. The next individual is Eric Frazier. Eric, I've allowed you to unmute yourself. Mr. Frazier. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. There was a little lag time in getting that uh, unmute notification. Um, thank you very much. The question I had for you is about the communication and outreach. So in this new Zoom reality that we're in, uh, I've heard a lot of comments from the community that they're not able to access Zoom or participate because of the lack of uh, internet or other technology issues. So the question is, uh, when it comes to this plan as well as other uh, calls for the public to get involved, what steps are being taken to augment just this access, um, you know, by the internet that apparently a lot of people are uh, unable to uh, participate? Yes, thank you. That's a great question. And it's really been um, a global issue that we've been looking at with, with all of our outreach um, through the entire department. And at this point, we have to remain consistent with the health order and not hold um, opportunities for large amounts of people to gather. So we have moved to the Zoom platform, which does allow for people to call in by phone. Um, we also plan on recording our public um, open house that will occur on the 15th and posting that uh, to the website. If people aren't able to attend, they can view after. And we are trying to expand our outreach opportunities beyond what was in our original plan due to the virtual environment and are looking for standing meetings um, or other organizations that um, want to review the plan and come into those meetings specifically. We are also working with our Citizens Advisory Committee meeting to do some outreach through uh, radio and print media and um, but are really open to any ideas that you would have that would help us um, create a more robust outreach opportunity. Um, we are trying to do absolutely everything we can considering the, the remote environment that we're required to function within. Thank you. Thank you. I think those are all the hands we have. 
Yes, that's correct. Through the Thank chair, you. Mr. Yes. Oliver, uh, yes. is it all right if I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, Ms. Lyle, I was wondering if we could go back to the um, the downtown closure of Fourth Street and um, see if we have any updates around timing or considerations that are going into that. So I don't have any updates from the perspective of the downtown plan. I will say that we are hoping to do some types of um, sandwich boards or some kind of outreach in the downtown as people do um, start to enjoy the, the street closure with the restaurants as far as the outreach component. Um, as far as the policy component, there will be some encouragement and openness and flexibility in the plan to allow that type of um, structure to facilitate itself in the future. Um, but I don't have any specific updates on the closure itself. Is that answer your question or did you have something more specific? In you know what, I, I apologize. I meant to direct that question at Tara. And um, I, so I apologize for um, asking you that out of the blue, but thank no you for, I, for doing your best anyway. I'm <laughs> always impressed, appreciate it. Tara, you are able to unmute yourself? Yes, hi, um, I can try to answer that. I think um, Cadence, when she provides her DAO update, was going to bring this up, and I'm happy to share briefly, um, and we can perhaps revisit um, when that item comes up on the agenda, but we are interested in looking for input from um, the committee members, from the council members today, on the timing for the open and out street closure component of 4th Street. Um, as as you know, the, the county is now on day one of the state watch list and there are some concerns about potentially having to roll back restrictions that would affect people's um, kind of comfort level with coming downtown as well as what restaurant capacity there may be at that time. Um, and so we are interested in discussing that today, getting a sense from, from the committee members as I'm well as- uh, grateful to hear that. I didn't um, know that that under 4.3, that that was gonna be a topic. So I'll hold the rest of my questions for that. Thank you so much for Great. putting up with me. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and move on to 4.3, the DAO uh, uh, cadence, please. Hi everyone, it's nice to uh, to see a few of you. Thank you very much um, for having the meeting today. I think it's it's great that we're all getting together. I also want to just take a quick moment to thank all of the city staff who've been working really hard on getting downtown reopened. Um, I think pretty much every department has had a hand in uh, trying to move this plan forward. And um, on behalf of all of our business owners, we're very grateful for um, your creativity and hard work to support um, our businesses in this kind of crazy time. Uh, a quick update before we talk to what everyone um, is interested in hearing about today, our, our Street Plus team is still operating downtown. Uh, they do have a new manager though. So Danielle, who many of you know, um, has uh, taken over the manager position. We are um, fully staffed outside of her though. so. Um, they are working hard, helping us get ready for um, open and out in whatever form that ends up taking and um, spent a lot of time, as you can imagine, in the last uh, month or so on, on graffiti abatement downtown and we're really grateful for their efforts. So um, as Tara mentioned, you know, we, we have a, a group of people who are meeting regularly and working regularly on the open and out um, program that that the city has kind of established to create a um, pedestrian zone downtown to increase foot traffic and to most importantly create a safe social distancing destination. So to provide our community with a, with a place where they can eat or they can potentially shop and they can do it in the safest way possible. Uh, part of that for us as well is um, making sure that there is ample curbside um, curbside pickup parking. Uh, right now, there uh, are a number of spots downtown. Um, we're planning, I don't know how many are currently downtown, but the, the plan that uh, the parking department uh, helped us put together has uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 spots. So really trying to kind of meet people where they are, uh, both in the parking, um, with our, our parking changes, as well as 
creating better outdoor dining opportunities. So I think we can, I can provide a little bit, a couple more updates and then it would be helpful to get feedback on, on the specific closures of 4th Street. So um, I think we all know that portions of 4th Street were scheduled to be closed. Um, we've had a few delays because of uh, protests and, and COVID and we're now on target to potentially close on Friday. However, with the new, um, with our being day one on the watch list, um, would like some feedback as to whether or not that should change. Uh, if we don't move forward with the closures on Friday, there are still some pieces we can move forward with. Uh, we will be replanting all of our downtown pots on Friday. I think most people have seen that they're no longer that lovely shade of terracotta and they're now um, very crisp, clean black. Uh, we have, we're organizing volunteers to come down and do a little social dis socially distanced planting event on uh, Friday at 1030, if anyone wants to join. Um, so, so the planting project will move forward regardless of whether or not the closures are happening. We do have a volunteer group who has very generously and graciously uh, put together some parklet barriers for our businesses on 4th Street. Uh, Belly received theirs yesterday and we have six others who will be getting their barriers installed on Sunday afternoon. Um, they had they had been planning to wait until the streets were closed to bring their larger team in. It's a, it's a church group with uh, volunteers, mostly high school and college students. Um, so they wanted to come in after the streets were closed to, to make the barriers. I'm, I have not spoken to them about the potential of the barriers not being installed. Um, so don't know if that would change their decision to do the work on Sunday or not. Um, and then additionally, we have ordered um, a, a large number of new tables and chairs. We would not be able to put all of those out if the road closures didn't happen, but we could put, um, we could still put some out on Courthouse Square and possibly some sidewalk locations um, up and down 4th Street. But again, it wouldn't be to the extent that we had discussed doing originally with uh, street closures. Um, we have some other beautification projects underway, lighting at Jeju Way, which is uh, moving forward, hopefully in the next couple weeks. And then of course, the kind of largest and most significant portion of the project is the um, art piece, which Tara mentioned, but we have Creative Sonoma has invested $60,000 in um, the open and out program for us to, as Tara said, implement some uh, kind of creative beautifications to infrastructure, uh, temporary installations, and community engagement pieces. Uh, the Art and Public Places Committee uh, also in invested an additional $40,000 into that, which Tara, you can correct me, but that had already been allocated for temporary art in Courthouse Square leading up to the um, installation in 2020, uh, January 2020. Two. 2022. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Um, so we opened that call to artists about uh, a little over a week ago. And so those projects can still be, they're all in the planning stages at this point. We have not uh, selected any artists or any specific projects, but that work will continue to move forward even if the closures do not. Um, I will say that, you know, obviously public health is, is first and foremost. Um, our businesses are very eager to try and um, operate however they can. So if, if we end up having to close indoor dining, um, this will be an important avenue for them to be able to have an expanded footprint into the street. Um, we can still try to support them by potentially adding a couple tables and chairs uh, throughout downtown, but it, it won't give them that same increased uh, square footage that we were really going for when the program was originally imagined. Um, so uh, the general feeling there is that if we do end up rolling back, this would be helpful, but again, public health is the, is the first uh, concern. So I think that's kind of a, just a, a brief overview and, you know, would we'll turn to you now for um, either questions or clarifications or uh, feedback on whether or not we should move forward with the closures as planned on Friday, or if it would be uh, prudent to delay those and wait longer. 
So, that, so uh, Case, that's the specific information that you need from the committee at this point? So, uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, I wanted to clarify. What you just stated then is the, is the input that you want now from the, uh, from the subcommittee, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, John, Victoria? Candace, could, could you do me a favor and, and uh, I lost part of what you were looking for as far as the question, what you were looking for input on? Sure. So um, the, the question now with um, essentially arising as a result of being on day one of the watch list, um, do we move forward as planned with partial road closures on Friday or do we delay road closures to um, either a, a determined or an unknown date in the future? Uh, when it's a little more uh, certain that uh, we're, we're moving toward um, a lower risk period. Yeah, I appreciate that. And th thanks for, for repeating that. I, I think, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this position of kind of in the dark, if you will, for, for, in, for such a long period of time, we never know what's going to happen from day to day and how the orders are going to come down, whether they are coming from the county or the state. It does put us at a bit, at a bit of a disadvantage. I think just personally, what I, what I would hate to do, I, I would prefer to have a little more surety. Um, not sure what the, what the merchants would like. Have, do, you have, do you have any finger on the pulse of the restaurants as far as what they might prefer? My first inclination is to wait until we have a little more surety, but they may be willing to take that risk and, and go ahead and move forward with preparations, um, knowing that they would that it could all be reversed, uh, depending on what might come down from the state. So, any 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 sense of what the merchants uh, or the and the restaurateurs are, are feeling at this point? Yeah, I think that it, given that it's it's likely that indoor dining will be no longer allowed in the next couple days. Many of them are looking for this opportunity to be able to uh, serve people outdoors. I think it remains very important to them to have curbside pickup, which is um, a priority for this program as well. But there is still the public health concern, right? You know, they, they don't want to be risking their staff. They don't want to be, they also don't want to be open if people, if there's no appetite for people to be coming downtown. So, right. It's, it's a bit, you know, it, it is kind of um, very murky area where I think there's, there's an appetite to move forward, but if we as a county are moving backward, um, I think it's understood that, that uh, it might not be practical. So, so the, the kind of what the, um, the biggest piece of this would be the actual closure of the street. Is that correct? Is that the part that is, um, so I'm trying to think of, so let's say they, they prepare themselves for the closure and then the state steps in and they kind of um, make that closure uh, less, less valid or less effective because of the rules and regulations. Um, is, it, is it the street closure itself? Is, is, is that kind of the more problematic piece or is it prepping the parklets in front of their restaurants that tends to be um, a, a concern as far as them going through a certain effort and then having to reverse that or choosing to reverse it. Is it the closure or the parklets that seems to be the most problematic if they were, if their state were to come down on us? I think it's, it's the closure itself because that presents some other logistical challenges which maybe Tara would want to speak to. Um, we are hoping that most of our businesses can still have parklet spaces set up. Um, it'd be a bit of a shift because they've all been waiting for the, the closure, the road closures to happen in order to um, be really fully begin their outdoor dining. Um, those who are having parklets installed would need to go through an encroachment permit process to be able to operate those if the closures don't move forward. And we've kind of been having them hold off on that for the time being. Um, but we'd have to push that forward if the closures do happen and not all of them necessarily have the capability to install a parklet at this point. So it, it would be, um, could present a bit of a challenge for some of the restaurants trying to reopen. 
Um, but uh, Gabe and, and his team have been pretty flexible so far as far as parklet boundaries. Um, so it's not, those could still potentially happen even if the road closures don't, it just makes it a little bit more complicated for the businesses. Mm -hmm. John, John uh, I think before I, I turn before I, I turn to you, I wanted to take a quick pause and check in with staff to see what other uh, discussions we've had internally or the considerations that we need to be aware of the, uh, today in helping to uh, give some direction. So I don't know uh, which of our staff members are available to speak on this topic uh, at the moment. Good point. Um. Hi, this is Tara again. I, I don't know if anyone else wants to jump in. I can't see who else is on the call, but um, I, I can share that in terms of um, city staff capacity to support the closure, we are ready to go for uh, this Friday, but the, the concern that I think is um, now, now the issue given our current situation is the closure, because it was um, a kind of a long-term temporary closure of 4th Street, kind of an ongoing closure, um, each end of the street is will be closed with water barricades. And so they are not the type of barricades that are easily picked up and moved out of the way. And so the um, concern would be, should we set them up on Friday, then have to bring bring them down again a few days later, and then put them up again? It just becomes more of an operational issue um, for us to support that kind of um, flexibility. Unfortunately, it's just harder to be flexible with uh, that kind of a road closure setup. Um, I think that there's there's just an uncertainty as to what what will be the best and safest thing to do, given our current kind of spike in cases and certain rollback of restrictions. Um, and just to clarify a couple things with the parklets, you know, parklets and the use of sidewalks are still currently available and potentially could be um, even if indoor dining is is rolled back or restricted again. Um, and those can be dealt with separately outside of the road closure process. Um, and so I think if, if that's the direction that we go, we would be, Cadence and I would be working with the businesses interested in expanding their space on those two other alternatives rather than using the street, the closed street itself. Thank you, Tara. Anybody else from staff have any comments on this item? Um, yeah, this is Raisa. Um, and the one thing I would add is that um, in the um, studies that we're seeing in terms of um, making sure that people come out or want to be, um, uh, feel like they're in a safe environment, it really is predicated on um, how we're doing within the, um, the uh, health orders um, and how we're doing with cases. Um, so we have been discussing um, the fact that we would be or now are on a watch list. Um, and so um, that has been a concern. Um, depending on what uh, council directive is, um, again, sorry, I stepped away, so I'm not sure if, if someone said this already, but um, there are plenty of things we can do if there's a way to continue to put things out. So uh, the art, et cetera. And then as Tara just mentioned, um, the sidewalk seating um, and such what, but um, the question is, is it the right thing to do if, um, if we don't have sort of the um, enough people who would feel safe using it to close down the streets um, versus delaying just a little bit. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Victoria? I, I have a question. Um, I do have some thoughts on it, but first I want to clarify um, and maybe Cadence um, or Bryce or Raphael can help me understand this, which is, um, my the question is based on assumptions so the assumption is that we're gonna um you know they call like the how you deal with the pandemic like the hammer and then the dance and so the hammer we we know what the hammer is and now we're in the dance like go a little bit this way a little bit that way a little bit this way a little bit that way and so um my assumption there is that we're gonna have fluctuations for the foreseeable future until we achieve herd immunity or a vaccination, which is gonna be a long time. And so what I'm trying to understand here is, 
uh, the appetite that the business community has, the the restaurateurs, the real t- retailers have for um, us closing down 4th Street and potentially leaving it closed and just understanding that we're going to be in a long-term dance. It's going to be, there's going to be a week or a month or two months where it's good for people to, and it's really helpful for them to be outside. And there's going to be times when people aren't going to be willing to come downtown, um, but that there the businesses will hopefully be open for curbside pickup or whatever, um, more scaled back types of commerce. And um, rather than, because what I'm hearing the assumption be that if we close things down uh, under the health order that we're actually gonna reopen the street. And I'm not sure that going back and forth when we're gonna be trying to be nimble makes all that much sense. And seeing if there's appetite amongst the business community just to set it and let it go and understand that there's going to be fluctuations and is that okay I, I don't know how that works for the community yeah i'll i'll share um it's a very valid question um our our restaurateurs all of our restaurants along fourth street are planning to take advantage of this um individually they might change their plans if the health order changes if if further restrictions are put into play um but there's definitely an appetite from our restaurants to move forward with this some of our retailers are still a little bit skeptical most of them are on board most of them are excited about the potential of of, um, foot traffic uh, coming downtown especially since we're still really trying to accommodate that curbside pickup piece um, but again, they, you know, they might be, I, I don't, I, I think it's such a hard, a hard thing to understand because this is not this specific situation where we might be seeing ebbs and flows. Um, and would they prefer to have the street opened or closed given that we, we might be moving in and out of um, restrictions that has not been posed to them yet. Uh, We've been looking at it more from a open or closed as we move forward and through the health orders. So I can I can just share that for the most part they are on board and they would like to see um, the streets closed to give them increased capacity. But they also understand um, that 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 the appetite for that from the community could right. shift. So to that end, um, would, the, would I know you, have said you haven't um, asked them this question, but I, I do really think that we're not gonna have, a, it's not gonna be an open or closed thing. I mean, it's gonna, unless we get a vaccine or unless we have a terrible spike, it's gonna be somewhere in the middle range for a long time. Right. So um, would restaurants feel comfortable leaving their parklets open um, if, you know to to maintain the space and so forth and then using the um and i i don't know if kim nado is on the call i'm assuming she is but and then using the space on fifth street for curbside pickup if we left fourth street closed um and does that pose any additional problems so we i I think we have a couple options we can um we can move forward with what they've they've shared so far, um, or I can I can go back and ask again uh, what their preference would be given the potential changes we're seeing and kind of setting a new landscape of you know we all were hopeful going into this thinking that this would be kind of our slow shift back to our old normal. Um, we now are given the state of really the whole world, the whole country that. Um, this is going to be a long-term shift for us where it's not going to be just back to open and see if they're interested in, if they feel like we need to stick with what's happening now and keep the roads closed and focus on curbside or if they still want to move forward with outdoor dining. Right. I mean, my, my concern is this, is that um, we've been closed now um, almost four months and it's taken us, I mean, the first couple of months we couldn't have done this, but then once but this idea came up pretty early on and it's taken this long to be able to implement and that um, that by the time it won't take as long to implement because a lot of the groundwork has been done but by the time that 
uh, folks are ready to come out again, you know, it'll be more difficult. Whereas if the infrastructure is in place, you know, it can act as a transitional space. And if people are still coming downtown, I would so much rather them eat outside in a socially distanced safe space and start to enjoy the, the public space. I know that there's a risk associated with it, but I tend toward closing it um, and allowing for social distancing and then maintaining a strong um, curbside ability on 5th, 3rd and 5th Street and on the side streets. Um, and then understanding that this is going to be, you know, we're going to weather a whole lot of storms in here. Um, but I, I need to, um, you know, I, I can leave that, those statements here, but I want to make sure that we're nimble and responsive to the business community if that doesn't work. John, do you have another comment? I do. Thank you. It's, it's kind of a, a question. Um, I, I agree um, with the vice mayor about wanting to move forward. What I'm wondering is if we don't ascertain what the kind of a, a final decision from our restaurateurs and our, and our retailers um, about their willingness to move forward with making assumptions about the state, what the state might do, um, what would be the, what do you, what does staff see as, as harm in one more week of information gathering as far as basically saying, you know, damn the torpedoes full speed ahead, let's close the street and start act and, and start behaving as though, it's, as though it's going to be closed for quite a while. And, um, and just move forward on, on, on Friday. Um, is there, other than in, there's clearly a loss of income with some of the businesses if we wait one more week, but if we, if we don't wait and gather that information about their willingness to participate, we could end up with a very small showing of businesses open on 4th Street, which might be worse uh, than not doing it, than, than waiting a week and getting their, getting kind of a commitment from them, if, they, if you will, on what they would be willing to do uh, as far as moving forward. I'm just, I'm, without having a, a sense of what they wanna do realistically and in, in real time, I'm concerned about making the decision for them. I guess that's kind of where I'm coming down. My, 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 sense, my sense from Cadence is that it sounds like there's a willingness for them to move forward. Am I, am I wrong, Cadence? No, you're, you're correct. The, all, right now, all of our restaurants are planning to participate, which would be expanded dining onto 4th Street and likely into parking spaces, if not the street itself. Uh, now, will, would their decision change if we all of a sudden were on, were, had three days on the watch list? That's what I don't know the answer to. Um, so I can uh, go back to our restaurants and, and ask that and kind of get their, ideally get their commitment to stick with the program moving forward. But, you know, we do know that we have a few who won't be able to do anything uh, if the street closures uh, don't move forward because they won't have a large enough space that would justify their operations. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I mean, I, I think you're going to be able to get some some direction from us today. But then, again, if you wanted to kind of check back in with them, I think you'll have enough information to work with staff to make it happen. My inclination is to make it happen. But it's not just a matter of opening or closing the street. It's what happens. If there's going to be a lot of work that's going to go into making this successful. You can't just uh, close the street and they just hope that everything's going to work out. Uh, we're still going to have to, I mean, clearly all the restaurants and, and we already have guidelines in place on what we expect from the restaurants and what we expect from our, uh, from our uh, uh, patrons as well. Uh, and, and what I'm getting at is also that enforcement effort is who's going to be watching for that downtown too. Uh, and I don't know what role our Streets Plus folks will be playing and what role our downtown enforcement team will be playing because we also need to make sure that people that are coming downtown to enjoy it are adhering to the guidelines and that people and that the public knows that the guidelines are being enforced in the downtown. Therefore, yes, you are safer coming down because they are being enforced. We're not just ignoring people, uh, even just with a basic mask wearing, for example. So there's, there's work that's gonna be done to make it successful. It's not just a matter of just doing it and then see what happens. So those are my thoughts, but I also want to I want to move into some public comments. I'm sure there's other uh, input and insights from those that are on the call with us today. So 
let's move uh, into that. Uh, so we'll have our recording the secretary go ahead and open up our public comment. And there is one hand raised at this time. Um, that is Bernard Schwartz. Um, Mr. Schwartz, I have um, allowed you to unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you, Bernie. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a retailer and not a restauranter, and probably the restaurants have more of an existential challenge right now, although retailers also are looking at big challenges. And I have, I have to admit, equal amounts of hope and skepticism. Um, basically, I'm really hopeful that this is going to work, but it seems like when we start our marketing campaign to make this an exciting destination when the street closure takes place, that is going to be in tension with the current COVID news that is front page every day. And so Raisa was indicating that maybe a slight delay wouldn't hurt because in the meantime, other improvements like art and tables and furniture could take place so that if we opened in a week or even two, it would be a more dramatic opening. The downtown would look dramatically different. Um, I know that there's challenges in terms of installing the parklets, um, but that would be my feeling, which would be waiting a little bit to get out of the COVID news would allow the downtown to start their marketing campaign and um, really try to invite people to come down. It would be a shame to close the street when everybody's afraid to go out again. Thank you. Thank you, Bernie. Do I have other comments from uh, those that are on a call with us? Sure, I don't see any other hands raised at this time. Boy, I've never seen this group be so shy when we're meeting <laughs> live. <laughs> yeah. That's Zoom for you. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, okay, so uh, committee, what, what direction do we want to head here? Can I, I, I have a question. Um, yes. Unless, Victoria, you want to go? No, I'm just, I'm, I think we should just like have a dialogue here and try to work okay. it out. Excellent. So how quickly, Candace, how quickly can, could we um, ascertain the kind of the, the, the feeling out there of our restaurants and our, and our retailers on 4th Street? How, how quickly could you determine a, 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 how they're leaning? I could, um... I could do some outreach this afternoon and try to touch base with um, all of our restaurants. Um, as Bernie said, the situation is a little bit different for our retailers. Not as many of them are interested in moving into the street. Uh, so I think getting the, um, getting the feel from the restaurants will kind of set the tone here. And I can ask them, uh, you know, I guess it would be a number of questions trying to figure out if, if the situation continues to, it, it's a tough question to ask because I'd kind of have to just say, no matter what the situation is, what would you like to do? And yeah. given that we don't have a crystal ball here, it'll be a little hard for them to commit to anything because if it does get worse, I would imagine many of them will close. Um, but we, you know, we're all hoping that's not going to be the case. So right. I, I can, I can have some more, more conversation this afternoon and um, I ideally get enough feedback that could help us make a decision if we're unsure. Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll just jump in. I just, I, I do have a, I mean, I could go either way. I really have a, I, I, I appreciate, um, uh, Ernesto's optimism and, and also we got to bite the bullet and kind of move and, and, the, and there are merchants that are ready to go and, and want to move forward and I and I and I respect that and I it, not knowing you know kind of it's it's I have a hard time making a decision for them I think that's really I mean they know their business they know what they they're, 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 they're what they're hoping to do or what they're planning to do um, without knowing what the state is going to do I mean I there's a, there, there's a part of me that thinks, you know, let's just, let's just go for it. But what, when, when Bernie was talking about that extra time could, could also give an, op an opportunity to be even more ready for when they kind of, um, you know, cut that ribbon, if you will. Um, so I can, I can see myself going in, 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 in one direction or the, or the other. And that's why I kind of keep going back to wishing I had more input, uh, more current input 
um, from those that are going to be faced with, with actually making a, a decision for their own businesses. So I'm having, I'm, I'm split. Victoria, you have the comment? Yeah, I'm with John in that it is really hard to, to make this decision. Um, you know, I, I tend toward, um, again, the optimism of, of Ernesto and say, and also, you know, we, that we just got to bite the bullet. The one challenge that I have with it without, well, I have a couple. One is that I want to be respectful of the merchants and make sure that we don't put them in a, in a bind here. And the other is the public health bit where, you know, it was brought up that, we can't just close the street and hope all works out uh, in terms of that we have to have a marketing campaign. And going into this meeting um, and hoping to have this conversation, I was thinking actually, you know, the last thing that sounds like a good idea is a marketing campaign urging people to congregate in one place downtown that hopefully people will be coming downtown because they want to come downtown and this will allow them to do so safely. But the um, excitement that this should be um, in normal circumstances uh, greeted with would be, um, in my opinion, perhaps a little foolhardy. So um, I'm, I'm torn on this. I'm interested to hear what um, Ernesto has to say. Well, uh, again, I, I think that um, it, I agree that we don't want to be making the decision for the restaurateurs. I think they should pretty much, we, we've already agreed as a community, this is something that we want to do in our downtown, they've agreed to it, now it's a matter of when. So I think I'd want to put them in the driver's seat as far as making that happen with Cadence's direction as far as reaching out to them again, that's great. And to, and because people will have a choice, they have a choice as to whether or not they wanna come downtown to enjoy some of the things that we're gonna offer them. They will have that choice. And if they choose to come down, we want them to have a good experience downtown because if they, if they chose to come down, we want them to come back. We don't want them to come in and say, well, hey, I'm not coming back down here because this is chaos. So I think we all have a lot of work to do again once we do make that decision is that we want people to be able to have that choice to be able to come downtown to enjoy it. And then also we want to make sure that they feel uh, safe to come back and continue to enjoy it and to spread the word to others that, hey, this was a good experience for me. But again, we have to manage that. But I agree, though, that it's difficult for us three to make that decision for the merchants because they're the ones that are going to be doing it. We've already agreed that we will support this effort as, as a city and as a community. So how do we make that happen? And I think uh, Caden's reaching back out to them today and working with staff to make that final decision as to whether or not they want to make it happen by Friday or if they want to give it another week to have some of the other anonymities go in. That's okay with me, too. So, again, I, I don't know that we want that this committee to say, yeah, absolutely open on Friday or no, you, you, you will not open on Friday. I think we need to have our uh, businesses that are downtown who are gonna be uh, impacted uh, and benefit from this too, to be a part of that effort. And again, also I wanna remind people again, it's, it goes back to uh, ensuring that people do come down, uh, that everybody's following the guidelines that our restaurants and our citizens that are coming down to enjoy this. So can I ask for a little bit of clarification as I'm, as I'm doing the outreach, are we, are we asking them if they would like to delay by, by a week or two, or are we um, asking what their plans would be if we were to close and, uh, you know, be three days into the watch list? Yeah, I, I think the conversation is going to revolve around the watch list. That's new to us now. It's here now. So the, is their desire to start up on Friday, does that still exist? Or based on the watch list, are they wanting to watch it as well and wait uh, and let some other some of the other elements happen in the downtown as well? I'm not sure if that's clear enough, Cadence, but again, I want to have them and you work with them to figure out what's going to be best for them. I think we as a city, I think we're ready uh, to make it happen, whatever whatever direction they decide to go. Okay, I'll uh, yeah, I'll, I, I'm happy to. I'm comfortable having that conversation, um, and then letting them know that there would be if they decide not to move. If their preference is not to close on Friday, um, that we don't have a set date in mind. It would be waiting until hopefully things clear up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cadence, there's there's one other question. Is it okay if I ask a question, Ernesto? Um, absolutely, absolutely. Cadence, there's one other question that I'd like to, um, that I find, think would be helpful in answering this, which is, um, would the merchants be, um, 
you know, aside from the watch list, that when they open, um, do they understand and are they open to living with the reality that we're probably going to be at different phases of of this and are they okay to set this up and, and have the flow of whether there's indoor or outdoor or only curbside have that sort of are they okay to go with the, that flow um, understanding that that's largely going to be outside of our local control and that what we can do is what we're ready to do which is the infrastructure part for them but that it doesn't come up and come down easily and that it would be something that we'd all kind of have to endure well okay. they would really have to endure and we will try to support right okay Does, is that question clear enough for for you i i think it is um and i will uh work on reaching out to everyone this afternoon and we can um i can follow back up with the committee um I don't know, tomorrow, I think, if that's if you're all comfortable with that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'll check in with staff again. Staff, is there any any, any other input that you have in uh, in moving this forward? In terms of hi, this is Tara Thompson. In terms of the logistics of it, um, I will just work with Cadence to know when when we want to do it. I mean, right now, city staff are all prepared to do the closure of Friday morning. And I've let a few folks know that I will confirm that given things change so quickly with, with current um, health orders. So um, really, it's just a matter of communicating. And she and I can work together to make sure we're notifying everyone of that decision. Thank you. And, and you will notify the committee, not for, for the sake of conversation, just to let us know what direction was decided. Correct, yes. Thank you. Mayor, can I ask a question for clarification? Mayor's not here. I'm, go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead just, John. just going back to the past. <laughs> um, the, and it is like following a bouncing ball, and I, and quite frankly, I excuse my ignorance on this, but as far as the, the most recent orders, that, that, that's the, the boom that's being lowered on the cities, where it's being lowered on the cities, I know that indoor dining is out. Is is any occupation of an inside space in retail is that also out, or is they are they allowing facial coverings and social distancing in standard retail environments, or is that verboten to have even to go inside a building at this point? With those that where they have actually lowered the boom, I've lost track of what this most recent boom looks like. Um, is there Go yeah I, I actually don't know all the specifics I just know that should Sonoma County remain on the watch list for three days then certain restrictions will be be put back into effect and that could include a list of variety of things and number one mm -hmm. on that list was to um, eliminate the option for indoor dining um, and right. that bars bars restaurants taverns uh, sorry bars um, uh, winery, tasting rooms, all, all things indoors that were right. previously allowed would be restricted, but I don't know the specifics and I don't know if all of them are enacted if, if needed or if just some of them. Okay, because I think I do remember that it's, it seems to be mainly uh, those that are in the business of selling food and drink. Um, so I just, I just, I was just curious if, as, as, if we had any clarity to, to allow our other merchants to be able to be um, open and if we were to indeed to delay the closure, of course, they would it would be a, a benefit to, to our standard retailers. Um, and if we close, uh, it allows it would allow our restaurants to function. So it's it, it's really this it's it's a tough one. I look forward to to your survey um, to see what's what can just to see what what the what come what the final final is kind of if you will. Councilmember Sawyer, uh, this is uh, Marketing Outreach Coordinator Kevin King. <clears throat> hey, Kevin. Uh, so I have a little bit of an answer for you for what stays open on several consecutive, if there's on the monitoring list for three consecutive days. Uh, it's mostly dine-in restaurants, wineries, tasting rooms, movie theaters, uh, personal care services. Uh, retail is not on that list according to the California Roadmap website. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for that. 
Okay, I think we have uh, what we need on this item. So uh, without any further comment, we'll go ahead and move on to the Railroad Square Association Committee, Community Benefit District. Rafael. Good tardes a todos. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Great. All right, well, good to hear everyone and good afternoon, Vice Mayor Fleming, City Council Member Olivares, City Council Member Sawyer. I will be brief. Um, on my quick update, um, since uh, we're uh, watching the time closely. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, um, I was coming into the meeting with uh, a lot of excitement, especially around the uh, open and out program. We've been working great with the downtown businesses as well as the DAO. Uh, but the, uh, uh, the, uh, as the county adds, uh, adds us to the, to the state watch list, it is concerning. So a uh, report from Railroad Square is that the AC Marriott um, will be opening uh, this month. So uh, that's again, exciting news as well as concerning news given the uh, potential update to the health order. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm finding out that people remain very optimistic, resilient, and that's what we have been learning over the past several years and particularly after the fire. So. Uh, kudos to all the business owners, restaurant owners, they get up every day, they go out there and uh, they're creative, they're very creative, um, but we also need to take in part the, uh, the work that is going in with the partnerships, uh, of course, us being one of them. Um, another update regarding Railroad Square is that um, the um, association, uh, the, the uh, association formed the the board so we have an, uh, an official board uh, and they have uh, met uh, during the month of April May and June so the meetings have been great uh, we have a president and that is uh, Mike Montague who is the owner of TVAX uh, and Hugh Futrell is the uh, treasurer for the uh, for the board um, other updates is that the Community Benefit District has now hired a security company for security, and uh, they're doing the night patrols um, on a daily basis. Uh, Lagar Restaurant has also opened up their urban alley space for dining. And uh, again, uh, let's see what happens in the next couple of days or so. Uh, Grossman's has also opened the restaurant that, if you recall, is uh, right inside the uh, historic uh, Hotel La Rose, and they also ha are, are providing uh, outside dining. So they fenced off a little area there and added some fake grass and uh, have some very nice tables and such. Uh, so people are, you know, uh, gathering, um, following, of course, uh, social distancing, distancing protocols, as well as face covering, uh, obviously, when they're not eating. Um, the visitor center has remained close, unfortunately. Uh, for the last three months, uh, but we hope to uh, have it open sometime in the fall or so. And uh, we're, um, we're also seeing uh, train riders uh, starting to show up in groups. Uh, most businesses have uh, remained open, but are still working on their abbreviated hours uh, from like 11 to 4, 5 o'clock. And uh, there was a very important meeting uh, both the DAO and the Red Rose Square um, CBD or association uh, held with uh, the mayor and city officials uh, back in June to address the uh, encampment that was under the freeway. Um, and uh, there has been uh, a solution for the time being. And many of those folks who were at that encampment have, have been uh, reallocated. So um, again, uh, Red Rose Square is open for business. Uh, we're just waiting to see what will happen. Uh, but we're very excited that the, uh, the CBD again was created, the meetings are taking place, and uh, we're looking forward and remaining optimistic to, um, to uh, have a, a wonderful <laughs> Railroad Square District uh, coming soon uh, this fall. Thank you very much, thank you. Victoria or John, questions? John? No, thanks, Ernesto, and, and and appreciate the report. It's good to hear some good news. Yes, indeed. Uh, do we have any uh, hands raised for this item? No, uh, there is. We do not have any hands raised at this time. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to uh, 4.5 with our parking program update. Uh, Kim. 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great for us to be all be meeting again. Uh, as you are, know, we, we resumed paid parking on July 1st, and uh, it's gone pretty smoothly, I think. Um, we are seeing pretty, uh, about 30% drop in occupancy at the meters. Um, we have uh, got a new validation promotion that's going on also in in alignment with the resumption of paid parking. So we really want to uh, continue to work to get the word out about this one-time free validated parking session for up to $3.15 in value. You use the uh, validation code PARKSR with the Passport Parking app, and that will be applied to your parking session at a parking meter. So um, I've been working with um, Adrian and the outreach team. They've been a great help in using social media platforms. We've got some radio ads running and also uh, online Press Democrat digital ads. So we're, we're you know, working to get the, the word out. And we also have some flyers with information about parking downtown that um, I brought over to the chamber office so that merchants could have those available. So we're, we're really working hard to get the word out about the various free parking options that have been added. So that's the first hour free in all of the garages. The garages are free after five o'clock every day and they're free all day on Saturday and Sunday. And then the value zone um, parking meter rates were dropped from a dollar an hour to 75 cents an hour. So that's all in place. Um, we're also, uh, our, our new equipment for the garages is being manufactured now. So we're hoping that that will be uh, beginning to be installed. Um, August might be optimistic. September might, is probably more realistic. And we've added a new feature to the equipment. Um, we've added a sensor that will be on, as you enter the garage, instead of right now you have to push a button to receive your ticket if you don't have a permit. And this will allow you to wave your hand in front of a sensor so that you won't have to touch a button. So we're kind of excited that we've got that new option. Um, and then I just wanted to talk a little bit about enforcement. Our enforcement staff has, has been uh, resumed. Uh, they are writing warnings. Um, we, that we're really wanting to take time to educate people that paid parking is back. So they're issuing warnings for folks right now. Um, they are writing tickets for safety related issues and they're also patrolling residential permit zones as we're getting requests from residents who want to see us there. Um, but I did want to assure you that there are, they're writing like 95% warnings right now. So there's people maybe seeing something on their windshield. Oh, and we're also attaching that flyer that we have to the warnings so that people are getting information about their various parking options when they get that. So that's another way we're trying to get the word out. And, th and that, I'll, I'll stop there because I know we're running long here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Victoria. John? No, no questions, just a comment. I just wanted to thank you, Kim, for um, allowing your department to act as a partner downtown as opposed to uh, a, uh, what, a, 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 the darker side of, of parking. <laughs> Um, you know, we, I, you're, I, can, I know you're trying very, very hard to do what you can, not only to make the department function, but also to act as that partner, because uh, you are. I mean, it, it, that, that, your department is, is, is a partner in our economic health of the downtown um, and maintaining our structures and safety and, and, uh, um, and maintenance and operation of the, of the structures. So thank you for doing the best that you can to to be to, to be to throwing softballs as opposed to um, using a bat. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. Uh, do we have any hands raised on this item? Uh, Lars, we do not have any hands raised. And additionally, I wanted to let you know that, um, that for the last three items, um, the individuals who would, would have been presenting are not available. So for the last three items, we do not have anybody available for those? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, we don't have reports then for the last three items, but do we have any public comment on any of those three items? If you want to comment on public safety, maintenance, or housing community services, uh, please go ahead and raise your hand. We'll give you a couple seconds here. 
Uh, yes, we do have an individual. One moment. Okay. Um, and Dick, please feel free to unmute yourself. Mr. Hightower? Or yes, do you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, on public safety, just a quick report about Juilliard Park. Our uh, active neighborhood watch people are doing it as always, and uh, everything is looking really beautiful. We've got no homeless encampments. We've got no graffiti. We've got no drug dealers. We've got no prostitutes. But we do have a lot of people walking dogs, riding bicycles, bringing their children, resting on the lawn. It's beautiful. It's all good. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Gay. Any other comments? I don't see any additional hands as of this time. Thank you very much. So uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, today. This was a good uh, little bit of a recap and catch up. Uh, we have not met for, for quite a while. My intent is to get, get us back on schedule, uh, especially now into the summer season. So we, we will continue to have our meetings, working with staff. If you have any specific uh, agenda items that you, or issues that you want raised during this committee that pertain to our downtown, uh, please don't hesitate to send them our way so that we can see about working uh, and getting those into the agenda. So uh, any other comments from uh, uh, Vice Mayor or John? No, thank you. Okay, we're good. Thank you all and have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.